Hello everyone, welcome to the Creative Cove. My name is Michelle and today we're going to have some fun experimenting with uh, what I like to call water cuddler doodles. Um, I like to play with patterns and uh, experiment a little bit with the watercolor first and then play with some uh, striking kind of contrasting patterns and uh, trying to achieve an overall balance of the design. So this is the latest one I did and I really enjoyed doing this one. Um, what I found fun about this one is how I reversed the leaves um, and still managed to get a balance in between uh, within the composition itself. So I had the, the contrast of the dark patches throughout here that balance with the dark leaves. You'll see I have no dark leaves on this side and no white leaves on this side. Um, and I really had fun with that. Just and uh, there's uh, I don't follow anything specifically. I just it's very intuitive. So sometimes they work out really well, and other times I, I learn a lot from them. But they are so much fun to do, and uh, you never know where it's going to take you. And that's what I love about doing these. And this is probably my third or fourth video of how to paint these watercolor experimental doodles. So let's have fun doing that today. So you're going to need some watercolor paper. So this is just out of my um, homemade watercolor book. I'll try and remember to link the video to how to make one of these. Uh, they're super, they're relatively easy to make. And what I like is I just sew a bunch of my scraps together and then I can remove the whole pad out and replace it with a new one. So I, I decided to build a square pad this time instead of rectangular. Uh, I really like the square. I have fun painting in this in this size. And uh, we've done a few, like I said before. So, and this is just cheap watercolor paper. This is not a nice watercolor paper. You're gonna see it ripple and get messy and all of the above. Um, that's because it's junky watercolor paper uh, because it's just experiments. It's just to have fun. Uh, and I'm gonna use my Mei Liang paints watercolor paints and a number excuse me number eight round um Windsor Newton watercolor brush so we are just going to play with some colors here and as usual my palette is a mess because I uh, don't clean as I go when it comes to my craft room and my art space I clean when I have to <laughs> So I'm just going to remove those colors. I'm going to try and remember the color theme I used. And I'll try and include, here's the little legend that the paints came with, uh, what colors we're going to play with today. So I'm going to go into this yellow green. And you're going to see it's very loose, very unstructured painting. I'm just throwing it in. And what I'm going to use today is a straw. I'm going to go back to elementary school art. <laughs> I like to move quickly because I don't want to think about it. I just want to throw it in. I'm going to go into some of this olive green. I'm sorry, they call it tea green, but it looks like olive green to me. Throw a little bit of that in there. As you can see, just playing, not overthinking anything. I keep it wet. And then I'm going to go into this blue here, which I believe is called sky blue or fresh blue. I'll throw a little bit of that in, keeping that wet as well. And just throwing in these colors. And then I'm going to grab my straw and I'm going to blow on it. So. I just want to create some fun flowing patterns. You're going to see me move the book quite a bit here. I'm going to blow it all over. And keep adding more color. I'm going to go into some yellow sienna. Throw some of that in there. Again, not too worried about it. It might flick some. And then what other color did I use? Let me just look back here for a second. Oops. The greens, the blues, and I think some raw sienna. Some burnt sienna, sorry. I always get them mixed up. Because I love my burnt sienna. Can't get enough burnt sienna. 
I think I'm going to go into more of those blues. Really saturate that blue. And then we're going to move it again and blow some more. Blow the colors into them, into each other. You know, again, no wrong or right here. Just keep playing. Add a little bit more blue, maybe. It's pretty blue in here. It's such a beautiful color. Maybe a little bit more yellow. What is it? Yellow sienna? Yellow. Yeah, yellow sienna. Which sometimes looks quite gold around other colors. Throw that in. Just play. The name of the game here is playing. Just really play with the color combinations you like. Let the watercolor do its thing. I do like to leave areas of white within just for another level of contrast. And let's see what do we want up here. Maybe a little more blue. Okay. Let's go blow this blue a little bit. And then I'm going to let it dry and then we'll be back. Okay, so now it's all dry. <laughs> so what we can do is I like to peel the um, washi tape off. No, I put the washi tape around just because I like a white border. I find it just gives it a little elevation in the overall design at the end. Uh, when it comes to watercolor, I just like this white border but it's not necessary, so entirely up to you, because washi tape can be kind of pricey. You can buy, um, you can use like a regular masking tape, but maybe take some of the extra stick off before you use it, because it can remove the paper. And again, this is just a cheap paper. Uh, where's my cup here? I have my cup of crayons and pens. Um, so we're gonna use a, let's see if this guy's any good. I'm gonna use a micron here to begin and kind of design some little elements that we might wanna play with. So the idea today is we're gonna use that kind of floral pattern, this, this flowery leaf pattern. Very simple, uh, easy design to use and draw. Uh, this is a micron 0 0.03, it's an archival ink and also a waterproof ink. So it, let's say you're designing and you feel like, oh, I feel like I wanna add a little more color, you can throw more water paint in uh, watercolor in and it won't disturb the ink. So you can see that the colors definitely dry a lot lighter than when you put them down, but the, the blowing creates these really fun textures and patterns as well, which you can play on. So I'm going to start with this big patch here and I'm going to put in, say, a, a line across here where I want my pattern to start. And I'm just going to do these very simple very easy kind of leaf design. And this is really therapeutic, in my opinion, anyways. I find it very relaxing just to kind of doodle and draw your own little designs here. And let it see where it's going to take you. So I'm going to break where there's a, a white patch because I really like to play with the painted surface and the non-painted surface in my design. Um, sometimes I even outline it. So for example, I might go around the edge of this uh, white spot here and kind of just play with the textures and interest that the paint has created. So I've got my first leaf design. I'm going to maybe do another one coming up this way. So maybe just coming off this branch. And again, this is just coming out of my head. I don't know where it's going to take me. This could either be a success or a failure, but that's what this little book that I built is about. It's about trying new things, experimenting with mediums, and that's what this video is about today. 
So there's the flower design there, leaf design, I should say. So I think I'm gonna do one coming out maybe this way on this side. So I'll put my first leaf here, draw my stem, and then start pulling out other leaves. Now, normally I would turn my book around as well, but I'm gonna try and keep it roughly in the same direction as much as I can just so it's not too disorientating. Disorientating, is that a word for you guys? So I've got one coming in there. So do I wanna add more? Do I want to start building up patterns now before I start putting more in? Um, I, like, I like how the black pulls away from the background. So I think I'm gonna outline a few more white sections here and play with that idea. And like I said, everybody's is going to be different because the watercolor is unique to the person who is using it and how you apply it and what colors you pick. It's going to come right down to that blue, and maybe around this guy here too. All right, so now you can start building up patterns if you want. So what kind of patterns do I want? So my go-to is usually just a stripe. I really like just using um, just simple lines. So I'm gonna just pull my pen down like this. I can put my pinky along the edge here if I'm worried about going outside the lines. And I'm hoping you guys can see that. The problem when I pull the camera in closer is I forget that it's closer and then I start coloring outside of the, um, of the frame. I'm just going to outline these little white sections as well. They're just so pretty. And I don't want to lose them. And I'm just going to keep going with my, my lines. So you can take your time. You can use a ruler. I like the unevenness and the unpredictability of these lines. Some of them are nice and neat and others are just a mess. So I've put some lines in here, maybe put some lines going further up. You can change the direction of the line if you want. You can go vertical, you can go horizontal, diagonal, you can go thick and thin. Right now I'm just going to do a very thin line in these shapes here and then decide if I want to do some more. So I think I'm going to continue it up through here. And that's what's really, again, fun about these drawings is they're very intuitive. You might have an idea in your head when you start. I guarantee you if you're just flying by like this and giving it a go, it's not going to look like what's in your head because you're just going to work intuitively and have some fun playing with mark making. So I'm going to go over here now, I think. I can go wherever I want. <laughs> okay. I'm going to repeat some of that pattern over here because it's all about balance. So if you were to Google balance in fine art, there's all kinds of rules and theories. And once you've understood those, you can really have fun breaking those rules and going outside the box, so to speak. And uh, finding balance in unexpected ways is really fun as well and you'll know when you achieve it because there's harmony to your image and your composition and it can be in like I said unexpected ways where you can have look at abstract painting for example that's a great way to start understanding balance 
is looking how some abstract artists really play with the, the rules and break them. And in this, we're just going to have fun mark making and maybe playing with those rules a little bit. We'll see. I'm not going to go into the rules and the, the ideas and theories. We're just going to play today. Okay, so I've got some some lines in here. So now maybe we'll do something. Maybe we'll do a line coming up here of these petals, but we're gonna break them as if the white is on top of the background of these petals. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna break every time there's a white space I'm going to break that petal so it's a little bit more harder to register what we're looking at so I'm just going to put this line here just so I have a visual of where my block ends okay so that's that one so that one we might color in black after just to pop it a little more. Maybe we'll do another one coming out this way. So what white do I want to keep? Keep this shape. Keep this shape. Keep this shape. And the rest I'll ignore. So another petal. Another leaf, I mean broken by the white space. Okay, so that's kind of interesting how we've put layer here. We've put, um, we've moved the background and foreground offset here. So this has become more of the foreground is the open petals. And on this side, we've made the white the foreground and pushed the petals back. So let's color those in black. We're going to go bold right away here. Uh, let's see if I can find a, a black marker that will color it in pretty fast for us. I know I have a, a micron around here somewhere that will do that. There it is. So this is a brush one. It's also archival and waterproof. And it's got a long brush tip to it. So we can color in pretty quick. I've been using it a lot, so it might die on me. So I am going to color those in black. All the ones that I've drawn. Okay, so I have them all drawn in black now. Which is kind of fun, actually. I really like how that looks. It's pretty cool. Okay, so now we've created uh, more of a focal point here. So let's maybe draw our attention over to this side by putting in a uh, more contrasting um, pattern. So in the first one here, I used the circles, which I love to use. So we can use circles in, in a previous one. I don't know if it's in here or not. Uh, in another one that I was playing with, I used black lines and dots. So I really do like playing with these patterns. It's a question of how many patterns you want to introduce and how often you want to introduce them. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of create some pattern spaces. I'm going to do a little differently than the one that is on the other page here. So I'm going to color this in black. I'm going to choose a few spots here. I'm going to do that one. I'll do one over here. I'm also going to color in black and I think I'll do one in the corner down here which I'll color in black all right and do I want any more okay we'll start with that okay, so color those in black And I think I'll put some white on them. 
we'll start building up our contrast here. So this is a Posca marker. So basically it's an acrylic pen and it's usually pretty good at keeping the ink right on top. I do find like if you're using say an ink with it, uh, the ink will absorb into the acrylic marker, but for th things like this, it stays pretty white. It's got a pretty good coverage to it. So I do like the Poscas. And I am just dotting and creating a pattern here. So I think I want it a little busier. Just have fun. I'm going to fill in all of these now. All these little black spots that I have drawn. And we'll see what we'll do next. Okay, so I filled in all the dots. And I'm starting to really like the textures that are coming out of this. Um, I think we still need to build up a lot more contrast and uh, some fun design elements. So what else do we want to add in here? Do I want to go bold here and outline all of my white? Uh, let's give it a go. Wrong pen, this one. And see what we think. So I'm going to outline some of these huge white sections. And then kind of figure out what I want to do in this section because this has a lot of white in it. And I want to see if I want to keep all that white. Do I want to play with the idea of covering some of it up? So let's just outline it. Okay. I think I really want to start making these pop a little more. And what I'm finding right now is I have kind of a square, 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 and a, a, a section that's unfinished, which is just essentially another square. I want to start creating maybe some flow from one side of the image to the other. So I do really like this spotted element here. So I think what I'm going to do is pull that across. And that's this one. So I think what I'm going to do is take the lines that I just drew here and attach it and just maybe wiggle it over over to this side so that's going to kind of flow through now I can I can have it go right through if I want and maybe I do let's try it so I'm going to go right through here, right over to here. And then I'm going to fill that all in black. Okay, so while I'm coloring that in, I think I want to make this all black in here and dots. I think I want the weight of the black contrast right up into this corner. So I'm going to color it in. I'm now using a just a cheapy dollar store permanent marker. My other one gave out, which I knew it was going to do. So this is not archival or um, waterproof, but it's quick. So that was a bold decision, which is what this is all about. All right, so let's put some white in here. So what I can do, what I do find is happening is I'm losing the stem. So this stuff looks a little bit too random. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the stem back in in the white. Because I might add a little bit of white on top of these watercolor images after. So if you find that things are getting lost because you're coloring like the black line here, you're coloring in as you go, you can decide whether or not you want to add, oops, add that back in. That was a big glob. Let's see if I can get that off. Sometimes these Poscas like to do that. 
I don't know if that will go back over or not. We'll try. Just let that dry for a minute. And then just, we'll start dotting. I'm going to dot this and I will be right back. Okay, so while I'm coloring that in, I think I want to make this all black in here and dots. I think I want the weight of the black contrast right up into this corner. So I'm going to color it in. I'm now using a just a cheapy dollar store permanent marker. My other one gave out, which I knew it was going to do. So this is not our Carvel or um, waterproof, but it's quick. So that was a bold decision, which is what this is all about. All right, so let's put some white in here. So what I can do, what I do find is happening is I'm losing the stem. So this stuff looks a little bit too random. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the stem back in in the white. Because I might add a little bit of white on top of these watercolor images after. So if you find that things are getting lost because you're coloring like the black line here, you're coloring in as you go, you can decide whether or not you want to add, oops, add that back in. That was a big glob. Let's see if I can get that off. Sometimes these Poscas like to do that. I don't know if that will go back over or not. We'll try. Just let that dry for a minute. And then just, we'll start dotting. I'm going to dot this and I will be right back. Okay, so my Posca leaked again and created a big blob. So I'm just waiting for that to dry. And then I'll create more dots there. Looking at this overall pattern now, I feel like I do want to fill in some dots here. I'm not liking the stark black uh, voids in it. So I might not do as many in these spots, but I am going to add that texture in. Just in these spots here. Kind of get that full visual flow and no break. I found it was kind of breaking it up a little visually. I think that's dry enough now. I can proceed. Yeah, sometimes these Pasca pens dump. They kind of leak and dump a little bit more in uh, paint than you want. But it's nothing that can't be resolved. But it is nice how opaque they sit on top of these other markers. Okay. So there's our dots. Which I really love. So now I feel like we have some, we have pretty good harmony going here. I think we need a contrast in here. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this idea over here. So let me just flip the book around. And grab that, my pens here and my, my one pen and sketch in where I want them. Just make sure I'm in frame. So maybe I'll get them to curve this way or curve this way. So I got one curving here. I think I'm going to curve them this way. So again, I'm going to put the white. I think in this case, I'm going to put the white behind because there's so much white here. So I'm going to draw through the white. And then these will be drawn in in black. So anywhere I've drawn a black line, I'm going to break the, um, the leaf up. Okay, let's color those in black and see how we feel about it. It can be intimidating to throw on, you know, suddenly throw on this big black marker after all the work you've done. And But remember, this is 
it's experimental. It's uh, to get to know yourself a little bit, get to know what you like and don't like, uh, get to know patterns and balance, um, how to achieve it. So you're gonna maybe uh, get a few hit and misses, but that's okay. Because it's just going in your little homemade sketchbook here. Your homemade watercolor book. <laughs> Hopefully you've built one with me. I'll try and remember to link that. I am notorious for not remembering those things. Um, but I will try. I'm just going to reinforce this here a little thicker. So I think I'm going to bring that one right in. And go over those lines. Kind of make that one stand out just a little bit like that so I, th I think there's enough balance going on again there's still I still feel like there's quarters though so I need some more flow through here <laughs> somehow let's see let's bring one of these a little further across so let's bring this black one all the way out this way And again, I'm, I'm putting the white in front still. Let's color that in black. There's my black. There it is. It's a big fat tip, so it's a bit hard to get into the smaller details here. And this is kind of a, like I said, it's it's quite therapeutic, this. At least I think so. And then I'll just do a thicker line. Oops, wrong pen. I keep grabbing that one. I don't know why it's there. It's right in my hand here. Okay. I feel like we're pulling it out past this quarter. I don't want to quarter the design. I think we need one more design element. And I think I'm going to do my circles. I need to bring this texture further over somewhere. So let's pull it through here. Kind of have it move across the page a little bit. dead ends in that quarter section too, which is maybe visually bothering me a little bit. Keep it flowing across. So we'll bring it over here. So you can see I switched the book around and there's no orientation to right side up here. Okay, that helped, definitely helped bring that across. I think I might put it up here too. So now I can decide, do I wanna add another element in or do I wanna, do I wanna continue this through? Do I wanna change the direction of the line? Let me see what other element I wanna put in. I think, I really love the circles. So I think I will add circles. I'm just, uh, I really like drawing them. And I just put them random sizes all over in my space that's left. So I don't put them in the petals. I'll leave them out of the white spots for now. Different sizes. And I'll go through wherever I am outlined. Now you can decide whether you want to color in the background black or maybe just decorate the circle so they stand out. So I'll show you what I mean here, let's see. So my only concern about coloring these ones in black is we're gonna lose the, these shapes here behind it. So that I don't wanna do. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just decorate these circles 
and then maybe draw just a line going across here where I am going to separate the pattern. We'll have a look, see, and see if we like that. Okay, so I colored in the part that I blocked off. I colored the background black, and then the foreground on the other ones, I, I the background I left, not the foreground, sorry. I'm not sure I like that yet. Um, I'm not loving this. So it feels like a little octopus ten tentacles, which isn't a big deal, but I'm not sure I like this. So I, I'm going to leave it for now and introduce this pattern elsewhere and then see how I feel about it. So I think I'm going to bring this pattern over here. I'm going to put my circles in, my random sizes, my bubbles. I'm just going to fill this in and then I'll go in with my little black marker here because it's faster. Create that in inner black dot kind of makes this sh pattern show up a little bit better okay nothing's perfect here none of my circles are circles they don't look like perfect circles by any means <coughs> I think I'll bring the pattern right in here as well and maybe put a half one here maybe a half one here black little hollow circles. Let's see if I like that. I feel like I want to wrap this around this black dot piece around this leaf. Feels a little a little mist. Let's see if I like that better. Put some white dots in there. Okay, so one thing I noticed that I'm not loving is this line either. Um, how I did up one side that's two different patterns. I don't like how it's broken right in half. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring and break that up a little bit by filling this in black. I'm just kind of making up my own shape there. And see what I think of that. See if that helps kind of break up that perfect line. I'm going to leave these little white bits in here. And then redraw the stem in the white. That was, I think that was bothering me quite a bit. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to figure out what it is that's maybe off balance or irritating you. It won't irritate me, not, might not irritate you. That's why none of these would ever look the same because our, our likes and our perceptions are all so different. And that's why art is such a fun thing to play with. Okay, let me just block these in. I'll be right back. So let's put the stem back into just a line here. And then there's a stem this way too, right? Yeah. There. There we go. All right. So I think I'm going to add this texture to a little section down here somewhere. Maybe just in this little area here, just to bring it down. And then I think we're just about done. I'm still undecided about this section. So let's get this in. And I'm just going to wiggle a line wherever I want it to go. And then I'm going to fill in this 
with black. I'll be right back. I that in black now. I feel like I want to add this in, this black in to these sections, but in order to do that, I think what I'm going to do then is just color these leaves in where they cross over and then I'm going to have to add some black dots into here so that the pattern matches and then fill this in now because it was it was bothering me I don't like I don't like these pieces and if I were to fill them in black they would get lost against this so I kind of have to watch uh, what you fill and what you don't fill in black later on. But again, it's, it, it is just intuitive. So as you can see, there's nothing that can't be changed and altered in any way. So I'm just going to color these in. And what I can do is I can change the shape overall. They don't have to stay within those lines. So I can, like, for example, I can make this all the way down here. I don't have to stay within the lines that is the watercolor. So I would color in a few more of these black. see what we think of that shape and because we changed the pattern we'll add a few more black dots to the these guys over here still not loving this shape here you know what let's let's just tie this in and maybe outline what we don't like in um, the white marker maybe that will solve our little dilemma here so we kind of go reverse i'm now going to put it an outline in white where i feel it, it might be lost could be a fun solution something like that and then we could turn the turn this part into the dotted pattern And let's do that. Let's fill this because I'm not loving these dots here. Let's fill that into the dotted pattern. Oh, I put it in the wrong long lid. So I really didn't have to draw that white outline. I wonder if I can get rid of that actually. If it's dry enough. I might let it dry a little bit and see if I can eliminate that white outline. That I did, that I felt I had to do. Oh, geez, what am I doing here? I got markers over top of markers. That's just mixing. Let's try this guy. Has to dry a little more. We'll let that dry for a second. I think that might have solved our problem. Well, my problem. <laughs> but you can see how you can just switch it up. Switch it up and play with it. All right, so are we balanced? Let's have a looky-see what we think. I'm gonna turn this around again too, just to see where I started. <coughs> Excusez-moi. I, like I like these empty sections. I feel like this pattern needs to be elsewhere. So we need to introduce this Maybe right here. We'll throw it in right here. So it automatically stuck out to me that it's the only place that has that pattern. My pen's ruined because I stuck it in that white Posca pen. <laughs> Yeepers. 
I gooped it up. This is just a cheapy, cheapy black pen. It's not archival. It's from the dollar store or something. All right, I like that. Okay, so we still have the break and the white here, which is kind of cool. I like the flow of the dots. I want to fix this though. This is bugging me. I wonder if it's dry now. Dry enough, I can go right over it with my marker and eliminate that outline of white. And then outline it with just the pattern. Oops, wrong one. This guy. So I'm going to find the and just dot it out like that as opposed to drawing the white outline which I didn't like so you can see you can change it up there we go I like that all right I think we're done I think uh, I do think I want to bring this texture into here. Hmm. Do I want to bring this into here or this into here? I think we're going to bring that into here. Just lines. So much fun just having fun playing with your intuitiveness. Let yourself go for it. Don't worry about the end result. Just have fun playing with designs, relaxing. Try not to overthink it. That I find can be discouraging when you're sitting there and you know you get steam coming out your ears because you're thinking so hard. Ooh, should I do that? Shouldn't I do that? Just do it. If the idea comes in your head, do it and then learn from it. And there's nothing that can't be changed, right? So there we go. Another design. Um, similar, but a little different. I wish I had uh, put them on the same page. <laughs> Afterthought. And uh, again, just playing with your intuitiveness. Have some fun. Play with the papers and paints and things that you have. Play with patterns. Uh, play with contrast, play with balance, and those are the funnest things to play with. And I don't know about you, but I really love this. So this one I especially love. I just feel like I this could be a fabric for me. I would carry a bag with this printed over and over again. I think it's just so much fun. So you can see the difference. This one is much busier, but it's still, we played uh, with some different ideas on this one than I did in this one. This one I colored the, the white, and like I said, the black or leaves are on this side only, yet it's still balanced with the offset of the, the dark contrast over here. When this one, we could add the white leaves if we wanted to, um, but I, I really like the watercolor toning these down. And I like that we played with the foreground and the background. So in this, we, we put the, the petals to this leaf uh, in the foreground and the ones in black we pushed to the background. At least in this side we did this one we pulled forward but the the white section that we didn't get paint on it sits on top and again just another way to play so i hope this gave you some ideas i hope this inspires you to doodle uh last time i did one of these a lot of you shared it on instagram with me and i absolutely love seeing it so please uh, i'll link my instagram and uh, share them with me and uh, let me know what your thoughts and process are was and what you enjoyed and didn't enjoy about this. So uh, have a great day guys and I will see you soon. Bye!